CNC education is broken. It's broken. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Let's, let's actually have a real conversation. All right. Let's shine some light into the dark areas of our industry. CNC machining manufacturing in general is the greatest industry ever, right? It is the reason that we have everything that we have from the cars we drive, the toys we use, the computers, what we stand on, stand under, everything has been manufactured. The problem is our kids are not excited about manufacturing. So everybody's talking about skills gap, skills gap. For years and years and years, they're talking about skills gap, but they're not bringing solutions to the table, right? And they're not solving the problem. And the problem keeps getting bigger. And everybody's like, we need to go to the counselors. We need to go to the teachers. We need to, we need to go out and get everybody excited about the industry and show them that there's education right here. And these students can learn how to CNC machine and they can make it happen. We need to get everybody excited about education. And what I'm saying is that if you fix education, if you do it correctly, and do it like we need to in the 21st century. They will line up in lines and beg to be in those programs. You know, behind me, you can see rockets blasting off. You know, you go into companies like SpaceX and you have a 180, 190 foot rocket literally on a doctor's office floor. They're manufacturing the future, right? And when you go up and you see the people that are actually doing it, you see a bunch of 25 year olds with, with six screens and they're changing the world, right? Our industry, it's the same way, but we shelter and hold down our industry, okay? So let me, let me, let me tell you a little, a, a few things. One, teachers are heroes, machinists are heroes. You know, this industry is, is the greatest industry in the entire world. Like those that, that can't go to college or those that weren't made to be a banker or a doctor or a lawyer, like those that were made like myself, I was lost until I walked into manufacturing. People like myself, you know, we can find a life and a solution in manufacturing so that we can actually buy a house that we can take care of our kids, put our kids through college, right? But we have to be competitive, right? We have to solve big problems to succeed in manufacturing. You know, if you look at cars now, cars drive themselves, right? Cars are starting to fly, right? If you look at the industry, we have trillions of dollars. You go to IMTS and, and in a way it's so amazing, but it still frustrates me that you go to IMTS, you see 120,000 people and everybody's excited about manufacturing. Then you go to your mall and like nobody's talking about it. Everybody thinks made in, made in China is normal. Again, not dogging any other country. You guys need to manufacture and be serious. I love that you're serious about manufacturing. I just wanna say, that we need to get serious about manufacturing here in the States also, okay? So when I talked the other day and I talked about the training gap and I talked about different things, people are looking and they're like, Titan, Titan is training up a generation of programmers. And then I have all these machinists and people of industry saying, Titan, there can't be too many cooks in a kitchen. Think about those words. So you're saying that because a certain child or a certain person might not have an opportunity to actually rise to their potential, we should hold back education from them and keep them where they're supposed to be and allow those that spend 10 years to learn programming or figure out the solution to rise and be the cream that rises to the top. Right. Think about it. Think about what you're saying, because the truth is that the way we're manufacturing today is the same as 30 years ago and 20 years ago and 10 years ago and five years ago. But the truth is it's technology is on a different level. You know, back in the day when we used to step onto a CAD system, a CAD cam, right, and go into 3D modeling. You'd have this screen with just a million boxes and, and everything, and it would be like intimidating, 
right? And you look at it and you have to look at a book that's this thick to try to figure it out. And only a few people could do it because employers didn't want to spend money on everybody doing it, right? But today is a different day, right? If you look at Autodesk, Autodesk gives for hobbyists and, and teachers, for education and students, Autodesk gives everything for free, right? So now you can actually go to our academy, go to resources, download CAD CAM for free. You can go over it, learn CAD, and in an hour, you can actually just learn like, wait, a rectangle, click, expand, click, put my numbers, boom, boom, right click, extrude, solid model in 10 seconds. What? Right? Now it's so easy, right? So now, now why would we do it the old way if we can actually create models in seconds? We can teach our kids who grew up on cell phones and computers and technology, right? Why would we do it the old way? If we can teach them to actually design parts quickly so that they know it intimately and they, they create it from a dimension print and then teach them how to program a machine and actually watch the machine run so they can comprehend what it's going to do in real time and then take them to a CNC machine. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. CNC machining is just not difficult. It's not difficult. It's not difficult when you have a good teacher and you figure out how to do it. What are you really doing? Stoning a table, putting a vice on, indicating it, figuring out how to hold your material, figuring out the torque pressure, putting a stop on it, zeroing your fixture, zeroing your tools, putting your tools in, figuring out your tools, right? Putting the program in, double checking everything. It's, it's just not something that takes years to figure out. It's something that takes days with the right training and curriculum and teacher to do, right? So, so why not do it, right? Why do we spend months and months and months on documentation, on learning all these different things before actually making parts because we're losing our kids? Kids, I see programs all over the country now because, because teachers are stepping up and fighting to actually run the academy. And guess what? Kids are actually cutting chips. Kids are actually making parts. And guess what? Dying programs are now thriving programs because the kids are making parts and that's what they were meant to do. And they're cranking it out. And now, instead of saying like, oh, you know, you need to like do this and this. Now we're saying take pride in your workmanship. Check out those dimensions right there. You know what I mean? Like I didn't spend six months on learning dimensions and GD&T, but now we're making a part, so we have a problem. So here's a six inch caliper. Here's a one inch mic. Here's a depth mic. Here's a go no go gauge, right? It's teach by doing so they get it and they can hold something in their hand and gain confidence that, that I spent all this time on the computer, but now I am holding something legit that I created. That's how you get it, right? Machinists out there, you guys, there's so many of you that don't understand what I'm trying to do, right? You're saying that, oh, you can't have too many cooks in the kitchen and you can't train everybody to be a programmer and that's not the real world, but you gotta understand if the technology is there, why not teach it, right? I believe that in the, in the future, you don't have you know, 100 shops, you have 10,000 shops in a district, right? And instead of having 100 workers, you have 20 workers, but you have automation. You, you solve bigger problems, right? Machinists, you have value. You know, if, if, you wanna get, if you wanna get down to it, if you wanna get real right now, I spent 22 years learning this trade. I have friends that, that spent 40, 50 years and when somebody comes out like myself saying, we are gonna teach programming, we're gonna have them making parts in like days, it discounts what they did for so long. And I feel that people get hurt because they're like, these, these kids are like doing it. And everybody's like, oh, this guy can make these parts, right? But I think you have to look at it a different way. You have value, right? But we need to teach the kids how to make parts and we have to be excited that they can make parts and then we have to lift it all up 
so that they can thrive and make part after part after part because you can only truly be great if you make many, many parts. A piece of paper doesn't matter. You have to run a lot of parts. You gotta make it happen every single day. You gotta hit tolerances and hit deadlines and take that pride that you're actually doing something amazing, right? If you jump in a car and learn how to drive and you're going up the freeway and somebody comes in and crashes into you, they're going to crash into you and then you're going to total your car, right? Because you just learned how to drive. But somebody who actually has been driving for 20 years, when that car comes over, their reaction time is going to be different, right? So, so don't look at your value based on the part and somebody else can make the same part. Base your value on your experience because it's the same thing. The longer that you're in the trade, the more that you actually experience, the more parts that you hit intense, the more problems you solve for huge companies, the more that you see the errors that can happen in the machine when, when things go wrong, the more as a valued machinist, you're going to have that experience and that cool head to be preventative, right? To be, to be proactive and not reactive, right? So we need what, so basically I'm saying we need to teach our kids quickly how to make a part. And then we need to learn boom, 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 all the way up. And we need to grab our kids and lift them up so they can gain all the experience by making all of these parts, right? And if they're going to be an operator, let them be an operator. Let them be an operator. But they'll understand the, the process behind manufacturing. They will understand how it all works so they'll be a better operator or a better setup person, right? Because they understand the entire game, right? And those that work hard will rise and those that don't will fall. And you'll still have a difference right? But if you tell them that they can't learn what they know is out there, you will lose them. All right. So I'm going to be talking about this a lot. I already went, went way over what I wanted to do, but I just want to say like education is broken. Let's have a real conversation. Let's, let's put everything on the table, have a conversation on how we fix it. Titans of CNC Academy is free. The curriculum is free. We have 45,000 students because it's exciting, it's dynamic, it allows students to actually make parts quickly, cut those chips without making mistakes. You don't, you don't see a bunch of videos of people saying, oh, I got hurt running the curriculum, oh, something happened. No, you see thousands of pictures all over the internet of people holding up their Titan parts because we're bringing a solution. We're not competing with you. It's a resource for teachers, it's a resource for machine shops. It's a resource for all of you because we love this trade. We love this nation. We love this, the world. And we believe manufacturing is a global powerhouse, but we have to think differently about it. I'm Titan. I'm out.